Hello everyone, I'm Shin from Imperial College London, and here I would like to talk about our work on testing of high-strength steel tubular sections using some advanced uh, experimental techniques. I would like to start with a brief introduction, then talk about our experimental work, uh, including tensile coupon test, local imperfection measurements, a stop column and short beam column test, and finally, conclusions. So high-strength steels, uh, they enable lighter structural components, reduce overall coastline core emissions, and bring more freedom to the designers. Well, hollow sections are well known for their advantages, such as a better structural efficiency, high torsional resistance, and the potential of concrete infill. So high-strength steel tubular sections combine the benefits from both and have been uh, increasingly used in the construction sector, such as in stadiums, bridges, and offshore structures. The structural performance of high-strength steel tubes can be different because of their reduced ductility and strain hardening and relatively lower residual stresses compared to yield strength. So that leads to the primary aim of this research, that is to investigate the cross-sectional behavior of hot-finished high-strength steel tubular sections. And also we wanted to explore the benefits of 3D laser scanning and digital image correlation, also known as DIC, in structural testing. Uh, so in, our, in our testing program, the materials were tested or were hot rolled and quenched and tempered to achieve their high strength. Uh, we look at seven square and one rectangular hollow sections, two steel grades S690 and S770, and the range of cross section sh uh, shapes uh, from class one to four, according to your code three. We've done 12 tensile coupon tests. Uh, local, imperfe local imperfection measurements for all specimens, and five stop column tests and 30 short beam column tests. For tensile coupon tests, the specimens were extracted from the flat faces of the specimen. And on the right, on the right are some typical structuring curves obtained from the tensile coupon tests. Uh, compared with the uh, normal strand seal, the oh, sorry. So the lower ductility and the less strain hardening are clear if we plot them together with the stretch strain curves for normal strain steel. And a quick assessment of the ductility against the Euro 3 criterion. The tested materials fail to meet some of the criterions, and this is something we need to be aware of when you use high strain steel in design, particularly when plastic design is involved. And next, we measure the local imperfections in the specimen using laser scanning. We scan the outer surface of the specimen and record the data. And then we establish the 3D model and characterize the local imperfection from the scan data. And how to do that? Oh, so we came up with three different methods. The first one we call it cross-section imperfection. So we look at a series of cross-sections along the length and take the out of straightness of each flat region as the local imperfection. The second one we call it play imperfections. Uh, this is based on the assumption that the two edges of the flat region are straight and we fit a plane you know, to the scan data along the edges and take the deviation from this plane as the local imperfections. The last one is longitudinal imperfection. In this one, we look at a series of longitudinal line across the flat width, a flat, length, flat region and fit a straight line to the scan data and take the deviation from the straight line as the local imperfections. The, the typical results are shown below and we take the maximum deviation as the local imperfection amplitude. So if we plot the measured values against the width of the flat region in this plot, what we found is that the longitudinal imperfections are on average lower than the other two and also lower than the Euro 3 recommendations. Now let's look at the cross-section tests. We tested the specimens on the different loading conditions. The stop columns were tested on the axial compression with fixed-ended boundary conditions, uh, while the short beam columns were tested on the eccentric compression with knife edges providing the pin-ended boundary conditions. In addition to the conventional measuring devices, we also use DIC in all these tests. And here are some typical DIC results uh, for stop columns shown on the left and for short beam columns on the right. Um, 
these nice looking images are the longitudinal strain fields from the IC results. The DIC enables us to know the deformation and strain across the entire monitor surface. And also we can see clearly the development of local buckling from the DIC results. So if we compare with the, the conventional strain gauge data for the same test shown on the right hand side, we can see clearly the drawbacks of the conventional methods. So with strain gauges, we can only know the strain at certain points on the specimen. And although we still see local buckling as the curves diverge, but it's clearly less or less straightforward and less informative compared with the DIC results. And finally, a quick comparison with the Euro 3 predictions. Um, so the, for, for the case of axial compression, the Euro 3 gives generally accurate predictions for the tested uh, specimen. While for the case of combined loading, the benefits from strain hardening are not captured by Euro 3. And uh, at the corners of the bilinear interaction curves of the Euro 3, some test points fell on the unsafe side. And this is something we can work on in the future to improve. So to conclude, we have done a 12 tensile coupon test, five stop column tests, and 30 short beam column tests on hot finished high strain steel, uh, such as an RHS specimens. We measure the local imperfection distributions in all test specimens using 3D laser scanning. We also used digital image correlation to monitor the strain and deformation fields during the test, and its advantages are clearly shown. In terms of the accuracy of Euro 3, Euro 3 provides accurate resistance predictions for the tested specimens on the axial compression. But for the case of combined loading, uh, there's definitely room for improvement for Euro 3 in terms of exploiting the string hardening and improving the shape of the interaction curves. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, that very interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to kick off uh, with a question um, to sort of uh, dig a bit more into the, the sort of the, the benefits and what we need to do to get there. Um, you know, if if we want to, in the future to be kind of thinking that to the construction industry is really using S690, S77 to take advantage of that higher strength, you know, what other steps do we need to do to go from where your research has has, has brought us to and lots of sort of engineers and contracted out on site being able to be uh, designing and using these uh, higher strength sections? Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, I think for us, the first thing to do is definitely to um, do more tests, do enough tests and improve the design methods for uh, high strength steels in different aspects. And and the thing for from the manufacturer is to uh, is to improve the mechanical behavior of their high strength steel products and reduce the cost of the high strength steel because currently the high strength steel still costs more than the conventional uh, strength steel. And then we, I think, with with improvement from both the design methods and the cost, I think the industry will welcome this new type of new generation of steel products more in the future. Thank you. Now we have a question from Dennis, please. Oh, hi, Steve. Um, mine is more sort of uh, experimental technical side. Um, notice from your slide, uh, I think page 112, uh, showing uh, the DIC method, it doesn't seem to show any localized stress at the preter. I'm just wondering why you're not showing it. I mean, I don't need to see that, but I'm just wondering why there's no stress on the factor uh, showing high stress where the, uh, you know, obviously the two plate, you know, compressing the uh, specimen. Is that a reason? Uh, well, stop so I think uh, because of the, uh, we, the GIS results are from the uh, speckle pattern we applied to the specimen and near the very end of the specimen, 
it's uh, more, just more difficult to apply a good speckle pattern. So in this result, I actually uh, exclude the results near the edges. And also, I think for ah. stop columns, uh, for stop columns, we also try to we also uh, prepare the ends, machine it, make sure it's perfectly uh, flat and square, and hopefully there won't be a uh, significantly different uh, DIC results near the end of the stop column specimens. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. So the question is, can I ask you, is it anti-corrosion materials? Okay, uh, thanks for the question. Um, I think uh, for this type of high strength steel, it's not. It's just similar to a uh, conventional carbon steel. It's not uh, anti-corrosion. Uh, if you really want to do that, we, we perhaps need to apply some uh, protecting coat on top of that to achieve that anti-corrosion properties. But without any um, coating, uh, just like the normal strength steel, it's not anti-corrosion. Yeah, I, I had a sort of related question. This is out of almost yes. my personal interest. So, right, so weathering steel um, is a very interesting uh, material. It's been used for some time on things like bridges uh, because it performs its own protective coating. It's a very interesting type of low maintenance. Uh, that comes in S355 grade. So this, with your interesting research of, you know, grades are almost twice as strong as that. You know, could, is it a possibility we could get weathering steel uh, is the weathering steel in these higher grades in future? Um, I, th I think uh, so for weathering steel, this, uh, this is high strength steel, and for bridges, this is called slightly differently. People call tend to call it like high performance steel in uh, like bridge engineering because in bridge, we not only require higher strength, but also like, as you mentioned, the uh, improved um, uh, like corrosion resistance and weathering properties, so I think there there sh there should be some weathering steels in on the market with higher strength available now. But I'm I'm not 100% uh, sure whether they can achieve uh, such high grade uh, at the moment. But I think it's definitely possible in the future.